Hi everyone, welcome back to our new post today and let's continue with the uh, remaining topics uh, for the UPSC preliminary examination of 2025. So the very first topic that we taken for June 7th where we stopped at was is the G7 summit that is going to be held at Italy now. So Italy became a member after the G5 and with Italy's induction the G5 members became G6 and with Canada's induction the G6 became into a G7 group of nations. So they are the uh, most industrialized nations of the world and most developed according to IMF. So G7 countries consist of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, UK and the United States. Now additionally the European Union is a non-enumerated member and it is organized. This grouping is organized around the uh, values of pluralism, liberal democracy, representative government. Now G7 members are major IMF advanced economies. Uh, the US, UK, France, Germany are the first original members which were called as uh, G4 and this group was called as a library group because of the meeting conducted by Un uh, United States and Washington in the library of the ha White House with Japan joining in it became G5 and now the first summit was hosted by France uh, when Italy became a member and it was called as G7 the first summit was held in uh, 1975 and G uh, France launched the World Economic Summit with the first meeting of this grouping in 1975 however the first G7 summit with complete membership of Canada uh, took place in Puerto Rico in uh, and Russia joined the group in, in 1998. However, it was removed in 2014 because of its annexation of Crimea. The next most important issue is with regard to a Karnataka minister now being accused of POSCO, that is the prevention, uh, 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 POCSO, or the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences uh, Act crimes under that for sexual offences uh, with regard to children. And therefore, let me tell you that India is a signatory to the United Nations Convention of the Right of Child. And in this regard, the government has enacted various laws for the protection of children. The Protection of Children from the Sexual Offences Act of 2012 was enacted acted to provide a robust legal framework for protection of children not only from sexual assault, sexual harassment, pornography but also to safeguard the child the right of the victim at every stage of the judicial process. And framing of the act seeks to put children first by making it very easy uh, to use the mechanisms in a very child friendly manner. There is child friendly reporting, evidence, investigation and also speedy uh, trial of offences as well through specially designated um, special courts. And the act is gender neutral both for boys and girls. It defines a child as those under the age of 18. And Article 24 of the Constitution speaks of protection of children from employment in harmful conditions. So this is about children. The Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act. The next most important is about now AP government is going to conduct a skill uh, census. So we have heard of caste census, we have heard of the general census but then AP government is going to conduct a skill census and this was said by the new government formed by Chandrabai Bunaidu. Along with that Amravati was decided as a capital and Vishakapatnam as a financial capital of the state. Now capitals are decided in taking various conditions into uh, consideration though Article 2, 3 of of the constitution speaks of the parliament's power to establish and also uh, form new states alter the boundaries names etc but the the power to decide on the capital rests with the state now state take, takes into considerations many uh, uh, many factors while deciding on the capital especially cultural significance of the region the core or the region of economic activity the strength of the population uh, the amount of revenue that is being generated from the region cultural and social historical significance uh, also and accessibility with regard to the other areas in the state. So this is about um the capital and Telangana ceased to be the common capital of the AP and Telangana with the celebration of 10 years of reorganization of the state of formation of the state of Telangana from uh, as a breakaway state of Andhra Pradesh. And the next most important is about the Kavli Prize that mirrors a Nobel in astrophysics and neuroscience. Now the inaugural prize was announced in 2008 and it was awarded to seven scientists. Now till date 73 scientists from 19 countries have been honored with this biennial award 10 of them have gone 
on to the Nobel Prize. And in fact, the Kavli Prize was designed to be the like the Nobel of astrophysics, neuroscience and also nanoscience, but it is far more reaching in its outlook. As per the will of Alfred Nobel, uh, who brought about the Nobel Prizes, uh, Nobel Prize is only awarded to achievements made in the preceding year, but the Kavli Prize does not operate under such restrictions. The prize comprises a dollar one million cash prize, a scroll, a medal and a seven centimeter diameter. The award ceremony is much more flamboyant than the Nobel one and a red carpet is rolled out for the invitees. Along with the US-based Kavli Foundation, the prize is given in partnership with the Norwegian Ac Academy of Science and Letters and also the Norwegian Ministry of Education and Research as well. Now, heat wave has been debated a lot in the country because they wanted to be included in the notified disasters under the Disaster Management Act. Let me tell you, we have an act with re dealing with disaster management and it came into force in 2005 after the cyclone the super cyclone of Kerala and also the tsunami which hit the Indian coast of Tamil Nadu. Now, currently there are 12 categories of disasters that are notified disasters under these act and they are cyclones, droughts, earthquakes, fires, uh, flood, tsunami, hailstorm, landslide, avalanche, cloud, uh, cloud burst, pest attack and frost and cold waves. Delhi is facing one of the worst heat waves ever and the temperatures are soaring above 45 degrees centigrade with a lot of uh, shortage of water and there is a discussion about the tanker market mafia and wastage of water as well. So the uh, issue, issue warnings were issued in the week just before this heat wave however still not notified disaster under the Disaster Management Act. Now the deb debate to include the heat wave in the Disaster Management Act is not new. Whenever this occurs there is a demand not only from Delhi but other northern states as well and recently even in Telangana as well. So the government like other states uses their disaster response funds to provide compensation and relief and conduct other activities to minimize the effects of the heat wave. So National Disaster Management Act was enacted after the super cyclone of Odisha and also the uh, earthquake of Gujarat and the 2004 tsunami. The National Disaster Management Act provides a, a National Disaster Management Authority at the center and State Disaster Management Authority at the state level. They oversee the disaster management at the national and the state levels respectively. The act also calls on Ministry of Home Affairs to be the nodal ministry now to oversee the nation's comprehensive disaster management. The the act also includes monetary systems like establishing of funds for disaster relief and other urgent operations as well. And the next most important is about the special category say status. Now, Bihar and Andhra Pradesh have been rec uh, demanding for a special category status for them. And they are the parties from this J the J uh, JDU and the TDB are with the support of whom the present government of NDA has formed the government at the center. So the demand is to grant special category status, which was previously denied to these two states. So special category status is something that was formed, introduced in 1969, and it is based on the recommendation of the fifth finance commission and it classifies the reasons of the states regions of the states by the central government to provide special assistance in the form of tax benefits and also financial support to the states for development in the region now the states come uh, that come under this category uh, get preferential treatment in getting central uh, assistance and also tax breaks and also money with regard to implementation of the central sector programs as well special cat category status is typically best out on those states which have illy and difficult terrain that is the criteria number one having low density of population number two or a sizable share of time population number three strategic location along the, along the borders number four and with neighboring countries economic infrastructure and backwardness and non-viable nature of the state finances uh, if these yardsticks are used andhra certainly and bihar probably will not fit into the bill andhra pradesh for instance is ranked first in the country in terms of the gsdb at constant prices with a growth rate of 11.43 percent and the next one is about national anthem Janagana Mana. So it is now being made mandatory in the Jammu and Kashmir schools. So it is called as Thou Art the Ruler of the Minds of All People and it was written by Ravindra Tagore in Bengali. It was called as Bharatho Bhagya Vidata and it was sung on for the very first time on December uh, 27, 1911 at the Calcutta session of the Indian National Congress by the niece of Ravindra Tagore. And the first stanza of the Bharatho Bhagya Vidata was 
was uh, adopted by the Constituent Assembly as the National Anthem on January 24th, 1950. A formal rendition of the National Anthem takes approximately just 20 to 52 seconds and a shorter version consisting of the first and the last lines takes 20 seconds to play. So this was for pub publicly first sung in December 27, 1911 uh, at the Calcutta session of the Indian National Congress at that point of time. So these are some of the issues that I wanted to share with you all for your most important points for the upcoming preliminary examination of 2025 with regard to your June 7th current affairs issues and I hope this was really helpful to you all. If you did, please do like, share and subscribe and don't forget to comment at the end of the video and I shall see you in my next post. Until then, it's very happy learning.